Hey, Bobcats, Mr. Flato here. Welcome back to another great week at the Helena Middle School. Hope everybody's coming off a fantastic four-day weekend. It is currently Sunday right now, and it is beautiful out. I am here in my office working on this Bob lesson in shorts and a t-shirt, so it's fantastic weather for October. We have a little bit more than about a week, excuse me, about a month to go before Thanksgiving break. So let's buckle down and make this a great four-week stretch at the Helena Middle School. This week I'm bringing you one of my favorite Bob lessons that has a new twist on it from last year. I think I'm going to spend um, this week and next week talking about education and different levels of education and how um, they lead to prosperity when you become an adult. And We're going to talk a little bit more about um, careers and why we do careers and what our ultimate goal or purpose is and how the work that you're putting in right now is so very important in that process and some of the benefits that pay off for when you work hard right now in school and middle school and on to high school. So let's get rolling on this Bob lesson. Um, this Bob lesson is going to be taken from a quote from Mr. Warren Buffett and the title of this Bob lesson is going to be The More You Learn, The More You Earn. Let's make it a great week at the Helena Middle School. All right, we're on the Bob lesson. The more you learn, the more you earn. But first, let's be our best this week at HMS. Let's be safe, let's be responsible, let's be respectful, and let's most definitely be a learner. All right, let's talk about the two primary reasons that as an adult, when you turn 18, when you turn 22, when you turn 25, that we get up and we work every day. The first is to have a sense of purpose. To have a purpose when you get out of bed in the morning, what is it that you're going to go do? What difference are you going to make in society? What are you going to bring to the table in society? What are you going to do that gives greater meaning to your life? Um, when I talk in career cruising, um, we have 24 hours in a day. And eight of those hours, we are sleeping. Uh, so that breaks us down to 16 hours in the day. That means half of our day of being awake Monday through Friday, we are working. And we want to do something that we feel like is our purpose, that feels like gives us a sense of identity. The second more obvious reason to middle school students is to make money. Um, you have to produce a good or a service to society and you bring your good or service to society. My good or service I bring is being a school counselor. Um, the good or service that your teachers bring is being an educator to HMS. Um, in exchange for doing that you get compensated with money so that you can survive because when you do get older, you have bills to pay, you have to buy your food, you have to pay for a place to live, um, buy um, pay for utilities, pay for a vehicle, so on and so forth. So these are the two main reasons that we do have to work. And from a lot of middle school students, when I'm doing career cruising, when Miss Panis is doing career cruising, all they hear is I want to make a lot of money. So this Bob lesson's for you. All right, so here I have a bar graph, and the title of this bar graph is Lifetime Earnings. That's usually 30 years on average based on educational attainment. Educational attainment is how much education you um, you receive in your life. Um, so the first bar at the left is less than high school. That's for people that fail to graduate high school. That cannot be an option for any of you at Helena Middle School. Um, the second is high school diploma. You, you earn your high school diploma from Helena High School or whatever high school, and then you go right into the workforce. The next is some college. You graduate high school, you do some college, but you don't, you don't graduate with a degree or a certificate. The next is an associate's degree. That's maybe at a two-year college like Helena College or maybe a two-year associate's program at a major university. The next bachelor's degree right there in the middle, that's most commonly when people talk about did you earn a college degree, that is what they're talking about. That on average is like 120, 130 credits and it takes most people on average four years to earn. The next is a master's degree. Uh, several of your teachers, administrators, counselors in this school have master's degree. That's where you earn your bachelor's degree and then you go back and you specialize in two years furthering your education. Um, the last two are doctoral degrees or professional degrees. These are being doctors, um, the highest level of education. This is usually four to six to even eight years past your bachelor's degree. So if you look at this bar graph, we have different levels of educational attainment. And if you'll notice, it's like the steps go up for each level of educational attainment. Um, we start with less than high school. On average, um, somebody earns $973,000. Now, that may seem like a lot of money, but when you look at the fact that they're working 30, 35, 40 years a lot of times, 
the, the math is not that much. It's 20, 20 some thousand dollars. Um, and if you look at how much it jumps every year, it's pretty clear to say that the more you earn, the more you will learn. If you look at um, not graduating from high school, for instance, and we look over at um, maybe getting a bachelor's degree, that's more than twice as much money in a lifetime. Now, this isn't the end all be all. This isn't, um, these are based on averages. There are some people out there that get a high school diploma and end up making more money than somebody with a master's degree. And I have another slide that I think I'm going to talk about next week, but that isn't always the case. We're talking on average here. So what are the takeaways from that graph? The takeaway is simple. Knowledge is power. On average, the higher level of education you receive, the more money you will be compensated with in your job or career over a lifetime. Why do you think that is? Well, the more knowledge you gain, the higher the likelihood is that you have knowledge and skill that the vast majority of society can't. If you can do something the vast majority of society can't, you have greater value in our society. And whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent, that's kind of how society views us. Let's think about this. Let's think about LeBron James, probably the best basketball player on earth. He has a skill set that is vastly better than everyone else out there. And that is why he makes millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. Okay, um, The local person working at a restaurant down the street cannot shoot, dribble, pass, defend the basketball like LeBron James can. That's why LeBron James gets compensated so much more than that person. Now, can LeBron James learn to do the job that that other person is doing? Probably. Okay, so that's an extreme example. But if you think about it, that's a great example of how it works. In our society, the more knowledge you have, the more power you have. And the more power you have, the higher value you have. And the more value you have, the more on average you will be compensated for what you bring to the table. That's why in that chart, if we go back, People that have more knowledge, have more power, have more value, and they get compensated accordingly for that knowledge and that power that they have. Right, I debated whether I wanted to show this slide, but I think many of you can handle it. And what this slide is looking at is it has the different levels of educational attainment, and the number of people that have that level of education is represented by the size of the circle. So obviously, um, the smaller circles are the harder degrees to get, and that means that less and less of our society has those levels of education. Where the bigger circles are, on average, high school diplomas, most people People have that. Some people have some college. Those are the most well represented, um, followed by roughly um, less than high school on the far left, and then a two year degree or a master's degree. And this red line represents the average amount of money people with a bachelor's degree make. Now, I mentioned in the Bob slide before, um, earning a higher level of education doesn't guarantee you making less or more money. And this is what this slide represents. So let's look at less than high school. It does show that 7.3% of people that fail to graduate high school still find a way um, or they have a niche in society to make more money than somebody with a bachelor's degree. Now, someone might say, Mr. Flato, that's a great example of how you don't need education. Well, these people a lot of times are somebody that have a skill set that is so far above and beyond that they're able to parlay that into a great paying career. Um, but in, in those people, I would ask, do you really want to roll the dice on 7.3%? Now, if you look at people with a high school diploma, um, more of the circle is above the red line, 14.3%. So getting your high school diploma um, almost doubles your chance that you'll find a way to make more money than a bachelor's degree. Same with some college, no college. Those people earned a little bit more skill, a little bit more knowledge than just those people that graduated high school. So almost a quarter of them found a way to make more, more money than a bachelor's degree. Same on with associates. Now here's where it flips. You'll notice that once you get over that hump of a bachelor's degree, 61% of those people um, with an additional two years of education with a master's degree find a way to make more money. And if you look at doctoral and profession, that trend continues. So what I want to show here is Education isn't the end-all be-all. It's a huge part of it. Um, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to make a lot more money, but on average, it does. That brings us to the quote of the week, which is pretty easy, which is where I got the title from, and that is, the more you learn, the more you earn. 
So think about that. Think about how important school is. Think about how important the knowledge you're gaining is. And think about all that power you are filling your brain with. All right, this week's, this week's Jelly Bean Question of the Week winners are Dalton Hudoba, Rosalind Kenner, Capona Rivas, and Sam Stutz. The answer was 42. And a reason that a lot of people got the wrong answer is they forgot something very important. The order of operations. we got to remember the order of operations. Um, there were some other correct answers on here, but I need your correct full name, and I need it to be legible in order to give you credit. All right, this week's Jelly Bean Question of the Week is, how much more, on average, over their career, would a person with a bachelor's degree make than someone with a high school degree? And I'm going to show you this chart once again. So the question is, how much more, on average, would someone with a bachelor's degree make than someone with a high school diploma make? If you think you know the answer, get your full name on it in the Bob Box by Friday. All right, folks. Four weeks to go until Thanksgiving break. Let's buckle down and make this the greatest four-week stretch of our lives. And that starts one week at a time, so let's make it a great week.